today on Divorce Court. I respect his profession all the way. He doesn't respect mine at all. I feel like she doesn't respect my work as much as I respect her work. Life is a big joke. I think it's a defense mechanism that he doesn't know how to drop. I don't think much of Angela's anger issues. I more or less just hide from them. I'm really scared that he's not taking it seriously. And the problem with that is if something funnier or shinier comes along, that might make me replaceable. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Angela Wilder and Andrew Olette. The two of you have been together for a year. You're here on a before your vows. So I gave you my compatibility test. You gave me your license with permission to tear it up. Should I think that your union is ill-advised? But before we get to any of that, Ms. Wilder, I'm going to start with you. I understand that you love him, but why are you concerned about marrying him? He's a comedian. Uh-huh. And, uh... Used that's... to be. Still Used is. to be. Used to be a comedian. You'll see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that's, that's why I love him. He, he uses humor in some of the most brilliant ways, but there comes a time when sometimes you have to be serious. Mm -hmm. And he's not willing to be serious when it's necessary, and I feel like that leaves me feeling like I'm more invested than he is. And, um, you know, like, for example, uh, like, I'll say, just recently, I said, mm -hmm. I love you. He said, that's okay. Love's a headache, but you can take a pill for that. <laughs> Which is adorable. <laughs> Except he's basically saying that my love is something he'd like to just take a pill and make go away. I said, I said it was viral. It's a viral infection. It's a viral infection. Yeah. yeah. You can't get rid of it with a pill once you get it. But she enjoys it. Yeah. It was a joke. It was. But it was a yes. terribly good one, I, but, I, but it was a joke. I was also drinking at the yeah, time. Yeah, uh-huh. What do you uh -huh, know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it's just, it's the, it's the constant that becomes the issue. Um, you know, like, when we were looking at rings, and he said, honey, do you really, do you, do you really want little African children to die in mines? so that you can express your love. That's not a joke. That's a thing that happens. But you weren't serious. You said it with a smile. That's not actually, and I told you I just wanted a cubic zirconia. I just want the symbol. The smile was a cringe. <laughs> Mr. Olin, <laughs> are you ever serious with it? Because women are serious about I was... their relationships. I mean, you, you know, they, they build, build their their lives and their future on that on the on, on I'm gonna get that guy. Right. Are you serious with her when you need to be? Um, yeah, sometimes it's like you have to. And you, yes. The answer is yes. I have to sometimes, otherwise she would not be with me at all. That is a bad that sounds like a bad answer. It, it, well, <laughs> I mean yeah, 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 yeah. I try not to be serious because I'm gonna be dead someday. That's uh -huh, the thing. Uh-huh. You know, there are a lot of things that aren't funny that are still enjoyable. Do you know what I mean? Making you, love. you don't have to, yeah, that too? Yeah. But, but, but having a good, deep conversation with somebody, to me, that's very See, enjoyable. Those turn into arguments. So if we have like a deep philosophical conversation, I'm doing something wrong at some point. I, am, I have the wrong opinion. Mm -hmm. It turns into a whole thing where she blows up. She's got a temper, she's redheaded. <laughs> She explodes. He thinks I'm angry when I'm being matter of fact. Yes. Well, it's also the throwing things. <laughs> she speaks in objects sometimes. Do, 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 she speaks in objects. Do you throw stuff? I mean, are you, are you that person? I, it's happened. It's <laughs> not common. Um, when I'm I take finding... it very well, seriously, I, I, by the way. I, I yes, find, yes, I find that hard to believe. That was very good. <laughs> That's the first good joke you, you, you did. I appreciate it. It's hard to believe that you're being matter of fact when that when that statement is followed by a thrown object. Well, so you may that, be thinking you're matter separate, of fact when you're two not. Two separate things. When I'm being matter of fact, that's one thing, and he will accuse me of being angry when I'm not. Um, the throwing things that typically happens when I find boobs on his phone that are not from the internet. They're, they're from a person that we both know. They're in the phone. I thought I they're was in going the phone, nuts, and I didn't ask for them. But you didn't delete them. They're, they were Maybe nice. Maybe delete them. Yeah. I know they were nice. There are plenty of <laughs> nice so it, Now, see, now that stuff ain't funny. You know, because she wants to be able to trust you. She, wa no, 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 no. she wants better. to combine her life with you. She wants to know that there are certain things that 
you won't do that will hurt her. I... And that's telling her there aren't any such things. Okay, so I can tell you one thing I wouldn't do that would hurt her. When she hacked into my phone, she happened to see a Tinder account. Everybody has one. I don't, I don't go on Tinder dates. That's not a thing I do. I'm there for the material because that is a human waste bucket. That's what that is. And it is an interesting place to write. Anyway, she went on a date from Tinder after she got mad that, that I had the date. Yes, you did. No. Dinner, drinks. No. Coming home drunk. I was not drunk. What happened after? Having you... two beers. All is right, not all right. Drunk. Hey, 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 hey. Y'all can have that argument at home. Don't, don't beat me up with it. Um, when a guy gives her a gift and it's better than my gift, and she's going out on multiple dates, if I wouldn't do that. If a guy's that gift happen? is better than that yours, happened... you should step up your game. Stop. <laughs> Now listen, I don't know what She's you... mad that I won't get her a diamond. That You hear that's what that is. I'm Don't ready even... to burn up your marriage certificate right now. <laughs> this is not going well at all. I, I, I couldn't even get a conversation out of you. People are, are jabbing and jibing and doing all this kind of stuff to one another. What do you think the primary problem is in your relationship? She says she can't... She can't take you seriously because you're always joking. What is your main concern about her? Uh, the way she communicates. Um, like I said, it's a lot of snipping, yelling. Um, she doesn't ever sit down and just have a reasonable conversation with me. Granted, that's not always easy, but at least give it a try. So we end up every conversation, it feels like every conversation we have is a huge blowout mm -hmm. fight. And Do uh, you facilitate a meaningful conversation without being, without anger? Because so far, y you've gotten under my skin. I've known you, what, <laughs> seven minutes? Yeah. So, so... If you want a reasonable conversation, you have to do things to facilitate that. And I'm asking you, do you think you do? I think I do. I sit down and I say, listen, I apologize pretty often. Mm -hmm. And I say, I'm very sorry. You were right. She's right about some things. There are some things in our relationship that she's absolutely right about. Mm -hmm. and I take responsibility for those things. Mm -hmm. But when you don't let it, when you accept the apology and you don't let it go. Don't let it go, then that's another problem altogether. Don't accept the apology. Yeah, 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 you, it, yeah, don't, yeah, you gotta, you gotta learn to let things go, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, but what I wanna talk about right now is the day you came home and found him in your clothes. <laughs> so do you have problems with your potential in-laws uh, because of this, or... I don't know. They never know. mentioned it? I haven't met them. This is just, and this is partially why. Uh-huh. They saw the pictures online, it's apparently a big deal. But here's the other thing. She makes pornography. So I understand, Ms. Wilder, you did come home one day and find him in your, in, in your attire. Why don't you tell me what occurred? Uh, yeah, I came home early from school, uh, and he is sprawled out on the bed in the least ladylike fashion I've ever seen, in a purple dress, not mine, <laughs> and a little um, black undies that uh, were most definitely mine. Um, lipstick, smoking a cigarette, hanging out. I looked good. <laughs> uh, Mr. Olet, now, first of all, I think people ought to do what they want to do in their own home, especially when they're not bothering anybody. So nobody's going to be casting... You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not going to be judging you and pointing your fingers and all that, but... <laughs> is it something you do often, and is it something maybe you should have discussed? You know, putting on other people's underwear is a little deep. So... <laughs> so something you should have discussed with her before you put, put on her panties. Fair. That's a fair point. A you little do. heads up, a little warning. Yeah, but to be straight, I'm straight. Uh -huh. I am not, I'm not a transgendered person. I, this is just something I do in my life. It started when I was a little kid. And some people do it, and there's nothing wrong with it. Right, and it got me a lot of attention from mm. girls. So I figured, it, that's how I started doing it more and more when I was a teenager at parties, and then it became a thing, and then I really liked it. And apparently, it's not working with this girl in particular. Yeah. But I want to make it work. Do you have a to... problem with it? I not mean... at all. Not at all. Um, you just don't want him wearing your stuff. Don't wear mine and maybe bring all. it up. Like, we, our, at the start all. of our relationship... I mean, you're going to huge... stretch it all out. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she doesn't... I, that's fair, and I drink, so we've been over that. But the, the point is that I was upfront about it. I was absolutely upfront. I did a tour where the pictures were online of me, and I've got them right here if you want to look at them. Yeah, do, do, do we have them? Go ahead. 
She saw they were online. Uh -huh. and that was half the problem. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I'm an embarrassment. Does your family did you see that stuff online? <laughs> That, yep, that became its own did little anybody, thing, mm -hmm. too. My, did my anybody mention me. it to you? Oh, yeah. Um, my, my parents are Pentecostal. Oh, really? And my mom found that one and um, several others. And uh, these ones as well, if you'd like to. Yeah, so they, they were on more the, on the conservative side of, 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 of very, things. Very, yeah. very the conservative. Um, churches. I am, yeah, and, uh, ooh. I'm now the, that's, that's the uh, purple dress. I would never own that purple dress. Um, but yeah, no, my, my parents have been praying for my... Well, this is not soul. bad. I like that look. <laughs> the purple dress. Now, you gotta... Yeah. No, no, no. That's not for you. <laughs> but yeah. I think the black skirt and the tank top is, is definitely you. See? I think that works. Put a little jacket on, right? Yeah. Some stilettos, you'd be working it. Necklace. Yeah. See? Judge agrees with me. So yeah. do you have problems with her, her with your potential in-laws uh, because of this, or? I don't they know. They never mentioned it? I, I haven't met them. This is just, and this is partially why. Uh-huh. They saw the pictures online, it's apparently a big deal. But here's the other thing. She makes pornography. So she should not be a hypocrite and worry about what I'm doing. Honestly, in public, she hides the fact. Yeah. She calls it art. Uh -uh. But it's pretty graphic for art. Yeah, I, we, we, I, I want to talk about that. Why don't you tell me what you're putting together? Because I did an in-camera review, review of your work before I came out here, and I'm going to tell you what I think. But what, what do you <laughs> consider that film to be? Because I watched it. What I do is I tell real stories with real couples. And that happened, the clip that you saw was part of that couple's that, that, story. That clip, OK. Let me tell you what I think. On stage doesn't matter. My parents aren't at your shows. Except for the ones that when post When you online. go on social media and you post something, you can say, show my friends except for so-and-so. Yeah. It would be that easy to keep my parents from seeing because, yes, there are things about my life that my parents don't know. Yeah. They wouldn't put that on HBO because there isn't enough sex in it. Uh, it was artistic. It was well. It was well shot. It was beautiful. The words were lovely, uh, and there was so little eroticism in it. She didn't send you the right one, then. <laughs> <laughs> you censored that, something. It, it, it was so little eroticism. I have seen and, some things. And a, a little bit of eroticism isn't a bad thing, and it's it, it's not pornographic. And I thought it was it was beautiful. I thought it was well done, and I thought she did a good job. I don't have a problem with her making porn, by the way. If she did it's it, it's not porn. But say she did. Let's say she send, has some other things. Oh, she, okay, she, okay, let's uh, hypothetically. Hypothetically, she can be Larry Flint, Flynn, Flint, the Flint. pornographer. Yeah. yeah, Flint, that guy. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. Just be honest and don't criticize what I'm doing when I'm being honest. She's, she doesn't have her name attached to that. Mm -hmm. She doesn't trust Well, what does she criticize that you're doing? Because she seems to be OK with the cross-dressing, so that's Except fine. In Except when I do it on stage. Public on stage doesn't matter. My parents aren't at your shows. Except for the ones that When post you online. go on social media and you post something, you can say, show my friends except for so-and-so. Yeah. It would be that easy to keep my parents from seeing because, yes, there are things about my life that my parents don't know. Yeah. But Ms. 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 Wilder, I'm, I'm, you're wrong. Just, you're just wrong nine ways from Sunday. Let me explain it to you. Okay. Number one, if he's going to be your man, he's your man. And he is who he is. And he doesn't have to hide any of himself from anybody on your behalf. <laughs> Not happening. You love him, you love him way, the way he is, way he is. And if your mama don't like it, your mama got to get over it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's how I feel. I mean, if that's your dude, that's your dude. And however he rolls, that's how he rolls. That's number one. And number two, don't be putting stuff. I was just telling Joe the other day, I don't understand young people documenting their nonsense. I did a whole lot of stuff, but I did it under the radar. I don't ever, I don't ever tag it up, post it up, put it out there. I don't want people to know. You know, we gonna do something a little off. You gonna do something a little off, you do it off. Whoever's in the room is in the room, but nobody else gets to know. <laughs> but that's me. Ms. Wilder, I want you to give me a 30-second sales job on why Mr. Olet is the man for you. I've always believed in a, there's a Japanese word called mushin, 
Mm -hmm. It's the imperfections in something that make it perfect. And he's the first person that I've been with that made me feel like my imperfections were perfect. Girlfriend killed it. <laughs> killed it. The pressure over there. Uh, Mr. Olet, yeah, the, the pressure's on, spotlights over there. And, and, hey, Mr. Olet, don't make a joke. Seriously, honest, don't make a joke. Tell this woman why she's the woman for you. She is one of the smartest people that I've ever met, and she can put things in ways that I couldn't even dream of. And my business is language. She encapsulates everything that I've ever wanted in a woman, except for the whole porn and fighting thing. <laughs> uh, minus that, she's perfect. Almost. <laughs> you, 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 were, you were right there. I mean, you were yeah. right in the sweet spot in your chest. You, the, the little bit of... Silly and you just popped up out of nowhere, <laughs> made an appearance, and jacked it all up. I don't know any <laughs> Japanese words. I can't compete with that. No, you can't, but you were doing <laughs> great. You were doing fat, and that's what she wants from you. That's what she wants from you. Um, if there was one thing you could get me, I know what it is. If, I, if there was one thing I could change about him, it'd be all the joking, right? you would want to be able to have a serious, calm conversation with you about important, meaningful things, correct? Yeah. That's the one thing you want. What would be the one thing that you would want from her that would make this relationship, uh, you know, take it to the next level? More jokes, probably. <laughs> I want her to take things less serious. She didn't get involved with, like, a dramatic actor. I can't act. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember So why. lighten up a little bit is what you're saying. Loosen yeah. up, lighten up. Yeah. You're a lovely couple, very bright people. Here's the part that you're missing. There is beauty in your differences. And one doesn't have to adopt the other's point of view or way of thinking in order for you to be together well. What you do, however, have to do is every once in a while carve out a piece of time or, or something that you do to satisfy the other person's needs. That doesn't mean you're denying who you are. What you're doing is acknowledging what the other person needs. You know, she's got this to bring to the table. You got that to bring to the table. She doesn't have to be more funny. You don't have to be more like her. You don't, you can wear your, you know, panties and a bra. It's all fine. It's all good. But every once in a while, you have to feed the marriage. And in feeding the marriage, that means stepping away from what you want and satisfying what he needs, stepping away from how you do business and satisfying what she needs. It doesn't take much and you don't have to do it often, but if you do it on the regular, that person feels fulfilled and important to you because you've made that, made that reach. You know what I mean? And I think if you two can do that, you guys would be a really great couple and now you would have some fascinating children. <laughs> I mean, I think it would just be trippy. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna give you the marriage license. I'm not gonna tear it up either. I'm just gonna slide it back in my book because I think you guys have some work to do. But once you do the work, I think you'll work out well. Good luck to both of you. This matter is adjourned. Judge Lynn said we had a lot of work to do. I've gotta take her needs into consideration and hopefully she'll take mine into consideration. I definitely need to uh, have moments where I can lighten up. And... There it is. <laughs> Just remember to laugh. <laughs>